Hi, I'm Julie Montague, the American Viscountess, and I'm here at Rockingham Castle today in Northamptonshire. I'm lucky enough to film at extraordinary castles, manors, and stately homes all across Great Britain. But many of you have asked, what makes a castle a castle? A castle originally was really like a village, a huge community, and we had really hundreds of people working here and living here. But of course, a castle has evolved, and especially now in the 21st century, most castles are actually family homes, or at least tourist attractions. But there are certain features of castles that really do differentiate them from any other houses or manors or halls across Great Britain and really across the world. And that's what we're gonna uncover today. What makes a castle a castle? There are 10 typical distinguishing features of a castle. After their successful invasion and conquest of England, the Normans began a period of castle building that was to last right through the medieval period. Although castles had been built in England since the time of the Romans, they had never been built with such speed or across such a wide area. Mott and Bailey castles were the earliest form of medieval castles built completely from scratch by the Normans. As their name suggests, they had two parts, the Mott and the Bailey, and a great example of this castle is Windsor Castle. The Mott was a large hill made of earth on which was built a wooden keep or really a lookout. The outer edge was then surrounded with a large wooden fence called a palisade. The bailey was separated from the mott by a wooden bridge that could be removed if the bailey was occupied by enemies. The bailey was the part of the castle where people lived and animals were kept. In fact, a large castle might have more than one bailey. To give added protection to the castle, both the mott and the bailey would be surrounded by a ditch, sometimes filled with water. A drawbridge was then used for access to the castle. Number three, the keep. The keep was the inner stronghold of the castle, and it was usually either square or round. The keep was the center of castle life, often serving as the Lord's residence, and was usually the place of last refuge when defending the castle. Sometimes buildings, like the chapel, great hall, and kitchens were integrated into the keep, and sometimes they were separated. The keep was the main residence of the ruling lord. Number four, the curtain wall. Walls were often connected by a series of towers in order to add strength and provide for better defense. The curtain wall was designed to protect the defenders from arrows or really anything fired by their enemies. Walls had elements to further increase their defensive capabilities, such as crenellated battlements and parapet walks. A great example of a curtain wall is Dunstanborough Castle in Northumberland. The gatehouse. The castle gatehouse was one of the most defensive parts of the castle. It was a strong fortified building positioned to defend the entrance to the castle. Gatehouses usually contained traps, one of these being a vast metal portcullis. A huge thank you to all our patrons, including those scrolling on the screen from our top two tiers, the Alberta Sturgis Countess of Sandwich tier and the Grace Kelly tier. For more information on becoming a patron, head to patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll also get access to lots of behind the scenes content, as well as other privileged access and special benefits. Number six, a moat. A moat really is a depression that's surrounding the castle, usually, but not always, filled with water. It had a defensive purpose from preventing enemies reaching the walls. And as a defensive mechanism, moats were very effective. A great example of a moat is Leeds Castle in Kent. Number seven, battlements. A castle battlement can be described as really being an additional defensive stone wall that was built at the top of a castle's main wall. The battlement had several purposes, to defend the castle and at the same time, the gaps in the wall allowed archers to fire arrows. The battlement parapet wall 
was built around chest, shoulder, or head height to help protect the defenders of castles from their enemy's fire. And then of course, the cutouts in the castle parapet were called crenels and were usually square or rectangular and allowed archers to fire their arrows at the enemy. They could then reload safely behind the higher part of the parapet wall. Number eight, arrow slits. Castle arrow slits were thin vertical gaps or openings in castle walls that archers used in order to fire arrows at their enemies. Arrow slits were so thin that they also protected the archer's body from enemy weapons. And of course, we've already seen these arrow slits at Rockingham Castle. Number nine, postern. Another door or gate in the castle curtain wall. Posterns were often in a concealed location within the wall, which then allowed the occupants to come and go inconspicuously. And last, but certainly not least, and my favorite, the Great Hall. The Great Hall was the main room of a royal palace, a castle, or even a large manor house or hall house in the Middle Ages. And then it continued to be built in country houses up until the late 16th and early 17th centuries. In the medieval period though, the room would simply have been referred to as the hall. So the term Great Hall is how it's referred to now for the surviving rooms of this type for several centuries to distinguish them from the different type of hall found in post-medieval houses and castles. The Great Hall was the architectural centerpiece of a medieval castle's interior and functioned as the social and administrative hub of the castle and its estates with everyone, including the Lord and his family, dining here. The Lord's table was at one end, often raised on a platform so that he could survey the hall. And at first, the whole household slept in the Great Hall. But by about the 13th century, the Lord and his family had their own bedrooms. A typical Great Hall was a rectangular room between one and a half and three times as long as it was wide, and also, higher than it was wide. The Great Hall was entered through a screen's passage at one end and had windows on one of the long sides. There was often a minstrel's gallery above the screen's passage. A great example is Stirling Castle. The hall would originally have had a central hearth with the smoke rising through the hall to a vent in the roof. And it's these 10 distinguishing features that make a castle a castle. Be sure to comment down below what castles you have seen or what castles you would like to visit, or of course, what castles you would like us to film at. And any other comments you want to leave, uh, do leave them down below. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you can see the next episode of American Viscountess at Rockingham Castle.